Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Hey, October 6th is National German American Day here. And that's actually next Tuesday if you're watching this video when it first came out. Now what is German American Day? What does it have to do with games? Well, over the course of time, there's been certain board game types that have been sort of announced or came out in categories. See, in 1995, a game called Settlers of Catan came out, and that took the sort of the bookend of what's known as sort of the modern day of board gaming, where it took these types of games that came out of sort of Europe or Germany-ish, and they're called German type of games, or now they're called just Euro type of games, because they were European, but first they were came out of like Germany a lot. And these games typically had uh, differences from the typical American style games that you may be used to. Uh, you know, the Euro games don't have player elimination a lot. They don't have a lot of luck and dice. Uh, they don't typically have a lot of ways to mess with or be mean to your opponents. They're typically more about strategy. They take out a lot of the luck. Um, if they use dice, they typically use them in interesting ways that, that helps you mitigate what's rolled there or do something special with them as opposed to just rolling and moving. And they tend to be a little bit almost sometimes like multiplayer solitaire where you're trying to be very efficient and you're not messing with other people. And that's sort of a stereotypical way. I know there's differences now. And of course you have the Meritrash or American Way or Merithrash as it's called now version which is very, much more thematic where you're, you're drawing cards and getting enveloped in a story and typically rolling dice and beating up on people. Two very different style of games. So you have the German or Euro styles, which I just mentioned, uh, and you have the American style. So today I thought it'd be interesting to do a top five games that really blend each side of those very well. And that's why for German American Day, let's look at some German or Euro slash American hybrid games of this that kind of that's in the middle so these might not be the best five games ever in this category but i think these are great games that are right in the middle between having some euro style mechanics and some ameritrash beat on your neighbor type of mechanics so let's take a look Now, in the year 2000, a Euro game came out called Carcassonne. It's a tile laying game. It was very popular. It actually won the Spiel des Jahres Award, which essentially is German Game of the Year. It's one of the most coveted awards in the entire board gaming industry. Well, last year, a new version came out of that called Carcassonne Gold Rush. So why is this on German American Day? Why should we play this? Well, it has, it's very similar to Carcassonne itself, right? And that won the German Game of the Year. So that itself is Euro. You're, you're, you're laying tiles. You're placing people on, on, on roads, on, on mountains. Uh, you're trying to essentially score points by laying tiles and putting people on certain things. And it's a very fun family level strategic game. Uh, and the normal Carcassonne isn't too nasty. Uh, it's, pre it's pretty normal. Now this one adds a mechanic that almost makes it purposely nasty. Where someone can be, they place a mountain tile and they put their little cowboy on the mountain. This is in the, in the western uh, United States here. And they're, once they finally complete that mountain, they're going to get a bunch of gold. Well, what you do in this game is it really makes you, you have this tent that you put on somebody else's mountain. And then every turn, if you want, instead of placing a, uh, instead of put, putting one of your own cowboys somewhere else, you can start stealing and siphoning gold off their mountain. So by the time they finish it, there's nothing left. So this has a really good strategy of, hey, I'm a Euro game. I'm going to be laying tiles and trying to strategize points. And when do I put people here and there? But it also has an aggressive side built in where you're really trying to mess with and steal your other player's gold before they finish. And that's why this one's my number five, Carcassonne Gold Rush. Number four. This next one is a pick up and deliver game, which is Euro in its sense. You're picking up products and goods from one side of the board and you're bringing them over to the other side of the board. And I'm talking about Black Fleet here. This came out last year, 2014, brought to us through Asthma Day in the US. So you're picking up these goods and you're bringing them to different ports and depending how far you go from where you got them, they're gonna be worth more money. So you're managing resources, you're managing cards. When do I play this card? How far do I wanna go? Do I wanna take a shortcut? Do I want to, you know, you're doing these things that you typically will do in a euro game and as you sell goods you're getting money and then you're turning in that money to buying cards and getting special powers which allow you to break rules of the game sounds very euro-esque but the Ameri side, Meritrash side comes in is in this game not only you're moving your own ships there's two neutral ships that you're moving and every time you move those neutral ships into somebody else's uh you know pirate ship 
Uh, you're essentially destroying their ships and you're grabbing their loot from them. And it's very nasty and you're trying to really mess with people. And that's why this was my number four because it's very Euroish on one side, but the other half of it is very mean and very nasty too. So it really blends those mechanics together. The components are awesome. It's a great family level game and it's sort of in the middle there and that's Black Fleet. Number three. This next one is Garden Dice. And this is on the Euro side because you're essentially, now there are some dice that you're rolling this obviously, but it's not that heavily luck based because what you do with that dice depends. If you get bad rolls, you can actually do some really good things with that dice. You're getting certain vegetables for those ones and twos. But if you do a lot of set collection and you get a lot of those over the course of the game, you're gonna multiply your bonuses at the end. So yes, there's dice, but like in a standard Euro game, they're using the fact that even if you roll badly or poorly, you can still do great things with those bad rolls. You can do interesting things as they're used as crosshairs to where you put your vegetables. There's cool things of like stringing together, you water one and it waters downhill. And this one actually has a lot of theme and, and, and you know, a lot of thematic things to the mechanism of the game that I really like. So it's very early, you're buying tiles with, 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 your, with your dice, you're, you're, you're figuring out where to place those tiles, you're trying to line up efficient ways of doing it and scoring points. So it sounds very Yuri, but there's also some meanness to it where you can have a rabbit or a bird go off and start pecking other people's seeds and eating their vegetables, and it gets nasty on that side. Now, also, this game can be played, that's a variant you can take out. If you want the standard Euro style game, you can just take out the nastiness, or you leave, them, leave it in as the base game, and it's Euro meets Ameritrash. It's nasty meets, you know, efficiency. So this is why it's an excellent family level game, and good for gamers too, that's Garden Dice. Number two. This next one is out in Europe, not quite out in the United States. Uh, you can get it on Amazon.de for now. It's called Royals. This came out late last year. It's actually being reprinted and being going to the Dice Tower Essential line by Arcane Wonders here shortly. Uh, this is a game where it's very Euro in its nature. Even the board looks dry. The cards look dry. The theme is barely there. This is like typical Euro style game, right? Which I typically don't like those style games. And you're trying to conquer, it's area control where you're, you're, you're playing cards to get areas or control certain nobles of people in you know, the different royalty. And you're trying to get, gain uh, France or London. And you're, you're, there's so many different tracks you can go with gaining the, the, the most amount of unique people or gaining the most of a person or you know, being the first one to get every town in a country, or just going after straight power and going after the king. There's like so many tracks, standard Euro game, many different ways to go. But the second half of the game is so nasty because what happens is everything gets filled up and you end up having to kill off other people's kings and their people that they have there and whack them off to take their place. And wow, beautiful blend of Euro mechanics and Ameri style mechanics and a game that I love a lot and that's Royals. Number one. Now my number one is Manhattan Project. And that's because it is by nature a Euro style game. Bunch of different ways to look at your strategies. Your, 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 it's a worker placement game where you're putting scientists and engineers on certain spots and thematically they're doing certain things that a scientist and engineer would do. They're, they're building plans for bombs. They're, you're, you're getting a university in your building so you can train more engineers. And the things you're doing are very Euro style. You're building up this engine building of both money from factories and you know uh, uranium and plutonium to start building these plans of bombs. And it's very Euro style in that nature. However, there's two things in this game that make it such a blend of these mechanics. Is one is you can actually do airstrikes and bomb other people's buildings so they can't use them anymore. Very nasty. Uh, also even worse is there's an espionage ask action where you can go in and actually see secretly jump into other people's buildings and use them so that they can't. And to make it even worse, you can drop contractors in that spot too, and they can't even use their own building. They pull back their guys, and you jump right in again. It can be very nasty, but it is very Euro too, so it's right in the middle, but it is my favorite worker placement game and one of my favorite Euro style games as well, and that's the Manhattan Project. All right, well, there you have it. There's my top five games to play on German American Day. And you've got enough time, about a week, to go off and run down some of those copies of those games to play yourself. I'll see you around next time.